This one is all about um, the creating... Chrome. <laughs> no, it's not oh, all about okay. the Chrome. You've got to wait for one more time on that one. Um, it's creating your brand on social media and digital marketing. Oh. Take a look at the importance of consistency of branding and how to achieve this. Talk about what branding says about you and your business and the value of brand authenticity. Discover ideas on how to develop connection on social media and the importance of being authentic. You will take away lots of practical ideas for developing content for your social media profiles, many of them specific to these difficult times. So, um, it can only be one person, really, if we're talking about all of this. Uh, it's somebody that we've already learned a lot from, and we we've have. had the very, um, the, the very large pleasure of being able to work alongside at uh, the Brazil event. Um, seems so, so long ago now. It does seem so long ago. But, uh, yeah, it was a big pleasure. So let's see if we can get this uh, lady onto the screen. Uh, it's a little bit different one. We're going a different way on this one. Oh, she so, likes to challenge, challenge us. Yes. So what we're going to do is, if I can do that, she should going be on our screen. On one, oh, she so. likes to challenge, challenge us. Yes. So what Hi. we're going to do is... Hi! Let's of audio one second. That she should going be on our screen. Oh, she so. likes to challenge. And now we should Hi, also have the audio Hi. sorted out. Lots of audio, one second. That I can't hear you. You can't hear us. Can, can you, you hear not? me? And now we Hi, should guys. also have the audio Hi. sorted out. Lots of audio, one second. <laughs> it's going to bounce I down for a little bit. It takes a little while for everything to set itself guys. down. The Just the bear with us on this one. <laughs> It's going to bounce down for a little bit. It you takes a little while for everything to set itself down. Just bear with us on this one. <laughs> it's going to bounce down for a little bit. It takes a little while for everything to set itself down. Just bear with us on this one. Wait an echo in an echo. Right. That should actually settle down in itself. So what we're going to do is, um, the easiest way to do it. Is right. We're going to hand that over to Zoe. Settle down in itself. Then, so what we're going to do is, and that'll get rid of our voices as well. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you guys should enjoy this. And then, so what we're going to do is, there's somebody that said there about the subtitles in Spanish. Okay. Subtitles will be added later on. It's very, very, very expensive. There's somebody that said there about the subtitles in Spanish. To do the subtitles live, so it's not possible. It's very, very, very expensive. Um, we'll have to send we'll have to we'll okay. pass it over to zoe and then we'll we'll bring zoe's audio in separately okay okay let's do here we go zoe we're going to pass you over and then and we shall also do this and this and then ah, i'm going to do this i'm going to fire over keith and this do this and this hi everybody um sorry that i made things difficult for the boys um i hope that you can all hear me um, everybody kind of sorry that i made things difficult for the boys um i hope that you can all hear me um, um, just waiting for it to catch up now, so we can get started. Um, um, I, I want to talk to you today about creating a brand on social media, now, so we can get uh, started. But it's a little more um, than that, um, so um, I want to talk to you today let's start flicking through. This is why um, the guys have sort of given me um, a bit of control over here so, to, screen, uh, to share my screen. Let's so start flicking through. Um, I want to introduce why, myself first. Um, the guys many of you know who I am. A bit of control over here to share my screen. Um, so I like to describe um, myself. There's this sort of many of you know met somebody in an elevator. Uh, how would you describe um, yourself? To me? I like so to describe me, I'm a self-confessed balloon addict. Um, definitely a design junkie. Um, I'm a certified balloon artist. I own a business called Jazz Trading, and I'm also a director of the Pro Environment Balloon Alliance. Um, uh, so Jazz Trading is actually a wholesale distributor of balloons, event florals, and paper party. And I'm very lucky to be the Qualitex distributor here in Queensland, in Australia. So why then is it that um, I'm passionate about sharing um, my background um, in design and digital? marketing um, so how did i get here um let's just quickly look at uh the path that led me um to this 
little spot right here now. Um, I had corporate roles in the airlines and the childcare industries for many years. Um, but, you know, I came from a family of artists and, um, I, you know, I always had a bit of creative uh, um, there. I can't you know, paint I to save my life, um, but I certainly can um, design know, and I've got a flair for colour and shape and line. And so I actually retrained in marketing, communications and design. Love to talk, have no problem speaking underwater with a pie in my mouth, as they would say. So um, I came out of those studies and I actually worked for a distributor in the balloon and party industry. Um, so, that was um, when I became I a certified balloon artist, artist. And, um, and my job then was actually to teach retailers um, and balloon artists um, back then um, how to use different types of products and uh, and uh, be versatile with products. So after a little while, I went back into a corporate role and decided that was the worst decision I could have made. Um, so I started my own digital marketing and business consultancy build, um, business, which uh, was the worst decision I could have made. So I started my own digital marketing and business consultancy build, um, business, which uh, was a Nope, we're good. Sorry, sorry, little glitch there. Keith's been turning me off, uh, turning my uh, vocal voice off already. Nope, sorry. Um, sorry little anyway, so part of that was that I actually designed and implemented the Qualitex Australia website. And uh, from there, uh, about three years ago, actually, three years ago in March, um, I was actually asked to set up a new distribution business in Queensland to primarily distribute politics balloons. So it's been a really interesting three years. Let me tell you, you can currently see me sitting in my brand new showroom uh, over the weekend. Yes. Let me tell you, you can currently see me sitting in my brand new showroom over the weekend. Oh, I'm pretty sure it's off, but let me just give you a second. You're going to just see a little bit of back end here for a minute. Uh, the only thing I've got is my headphones. Uh, the only thing I've got is my headphones. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah hang on two seconds let me just try this how's that guys yeah hang on two seconds let me just try is that this. better how's okay. that guys is that better Guys out there, if you just hang on for a couple of minutes, bear with us. We're going to get this sorted out because um, out there, it's, you, just hang you really need to hear what minutes, Zoe has to say, us. okay? We're so we're going to put a back, be right back because, on there, um, and you just hang. hang Zoe, are you there? Hi guys. There we go. Thank you, Zoe. Thank you for your patience, Zoe. Thanks for your patience, Zoe. We shall disappear and She's leave you with your theory. audience. Thank you guys. Much appreciated. Talk to you soon. Wow, seriously, after very little sleep for the last 40 hours, they were cool, calm, and collected throughout that whole uh whole little issue. So well done, to Keith and Dom. Hi guys. Let's start this all over again. Um, I'm so pleased to be here with you today to talk about creating your brand and your image on social media. So I wanna talk a little bit first about, uh, they are amazing. I'm looking at the chat. Yes, they are amazing. <laughs> so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about my background first so you can understand sort of where I'm coming from. Um, I then wanna spend a little bit of time 
um, I guess, inspiring you to work through these challenges. And this isn't just about me inspiring you. This is about you guys inspiring me to want to share. So let's get started. So if I met someone in an elevator and they asked me to describe myself, this is what I think I would say. So I'm Zoe. I'm a self-confessed balloon addict, design junkie, certified balloon artist, an owner of Jazz Trading and a director of the Pro Environment Balloon Alliance. So what has led me here? Um, I just want to chat a little bit about my background. It's super varied. Um, I like to say that I'm a jack of all trades and a master of absolutely nothing. Um, but I've worked, my background um, to start with was I actually worked in various corporate roles, mainly in the airlines and the corporate childcare industry. Um, but what was missing in those roles, um, I loved the people component, um, the communications aspect, but the creativity just wasn't there. And I come from a family of artists. My grandfather, my mother, my auntie, they were all painters. Um, and so there's always been this creative spirit that was there somewhere inside. Trust me, I can't paint to save my life. Um, but I like to think that my, um, my medium, if you like, is actually balloons and flowers and colour and design. So I retrained in marketing, communications and design. And then I actually worked for a distributor in the balloon and party industry in operations and marketing for a while. Um, that was when I became a certified balloon artist. And I um, was working with retailers uh, to encourage them to come up with new designs um, with product and also um, on how to use equipment and accessories properly in the industry. I left and I went back into corporate roles for a little while, which was a big mistake. So um, I went out on my own, took a big leap of faith and started my own digital marketing and business consultancy. And um, my focus in that was actually that I wanted to work with small businesses and startups to create a um, extension of their bricks and mortar store. Um, at that point to, you know, I really wanted to give people small businesses access to really fantastic websites and digital marketing, but then that they could manage themselves so that, you know, it wasn't out of reach of the small guys. Um, and it was actually this industry that inspired me to do that. So through that, I then picked up a much bigger um, project and that was actually creating, I uh, designed and implemented the Qualitex Australia website. Um, it's about seven years old now. It's uh, ready for a bit of a refresh. So let's hope once everything is back rocking and rolling, we'll, um, we'll be able to work on that together. So um, that was actually then what led me to becoming um, the owner of Jazz Trading. So we're a wholesale distributor of primarily Qualitex balloons, event florals and paper party in Queensland in Australia. And uh, they were looking for a new distributor. Um, they knew about my passion for the industry. They also knew that I'd worked with startups and small businesses. So um, that was how it came about. So that's what's led me to here now. And you'll actually see I'm sitting in my brand new showroom at the moment, um, which is completely not required currently, seeing as though um, we are, yeah, very, very, very quiet. Um, but we've just actually moved from about 150 square metre warehouse to a 500 square metre warehouse. So we're really looking forward to, um, to growing this and uh, getting ourselves into a position so that when the industry is rocking and rolling again, we're gonna be here to support and inspire our customers. So um, this is actually, um, this particular class that I'm offering has been tailored to the situation right now, but it's also part of um, a series of classes that I offer called Inspire, Create and Share. Um, so to start, this class off before we get into the branding side i want to talk a little bit about inspiration so the more i believe that the more successful we are together the stronger the entire industry becomes now this is a really great conversation when the industry is rocking but it's also a really good conversation for right now 
while we're all feeling, you know, the pain um, and the challenges of what's going on out there. But, you know, um, I want to share a story with you because although I haven't experienced anything quite to this extent before, the, the path to starting my business was not, was not an easy one. I, I gave up, I nearly gave up many times. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time worrying about my competition when I started jazz trading. Um, my closest competitor spent a lot of time making things really hard for me when I first started. Um, and I spent, you know, the first six months actually constantly worrying about what they were doing, what they were saying, that my sales weren't enough. And it was all based on fear and a fear of um, of lack, lack of business, lack of sales, lack of customers. Um, but I realized that I'd given so much energy away to worrying about them and what they were doing. Imagine if I could put all of that time into doing those things in my business. So the start of this downturn, um, you know, it scared me. I was worried. I had to stand down staff. Things were really tough. Um, I was moving, my expenses were larger than they were ever going to be. Um, and I went into that place of fear and of lack. Um, and, and I know we've all been there as part of this process, but what starting jazz trading helped me to realize was that, you know, I'd been here before, I'd been in this place of fear and worry. Um, so instead of worrying and being so fearful, I sat down, and I was like, great, let's move that energy of anxiety and stress into setting a goal and a plan, um, all the things that I want to do in my business during this time. And then my mindset changed. So I, I stopped, I changed my mindset. I asked myself if I was one of my own consulting clients from my old business, what would I tell them? And so that was to work out my point of difference, to focus on it and to be the best at it. So if I can say right now, this amazing convention is gonna give you so many ideas. You could be in a position at the end of it to go, oh my goodness, where do I start? I've got all this time, but I'm feeling a little overwhelmed. Sit down and work out what's your point of difference, uh, and focus on it. And what is it that you're going to be the best at? So in saying that, I want to share with you a little bit of um, a quote that is um, really helping me through at the moment. So there's uh, daring greatly means the courage to be vulnerable. And we are all so vulnerable right now. It means to show up and be seen, to ask for what you need, and to talk about how you're feeling and to have the hard conversations. So when I say, you know, I'm trying to be positive and I'm trying to be energetic and all of those things, I'm not like this all the time. But we have to have the hard conversations and we have to talk about how we're feeling. So I think, you know, collectively as an industry, um, you know, we are all relying on each other to support each other right now. If there's one thing that you can do in a little bit of downtime, is uh, possibly pick up a book called Daring Greatly or um, get the Audible or the audio book and listen to it. Um, I draw so much inspiration from a lady called Brene Brown. She's an American research professor and social worker, and she has become world renowned for her work on courage and vulnerability. Her work inspires me to be braver. It inspires me to be more authentic and to push myself outside my comfort zones. And so if we need that any time, more than we need that is right now. Um, and this is also leading into the rest of my session here about being authentic and sharing parts of who you are. This quote I have decided this morning whilst I was prepping for my class is actually going to go somewhere on the walls in my new warehouse. Um, this has gotten me through so many tough times. It's actually an excerpt from a Theodore Roosevelt quote 
that Brene Brown used as the premise for her Daring Greatly book. And it says, it's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and who strives valiantly, who at best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement and who at worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. So if you're standing in the arena with me and you're getting kicked and you're getting pushed down and there's dust in your face, dare greatly, get back up again because these times are what are going to make us so much stronger personally and as an industry. So in saying that, let's talk about our brand because we want to talk about being authentic Okay, and now's the time to say, hey, you know, I might have created my brand 10 years ago, five years ago. Does that really, sorry, I'm just having a very quick look. Everybody is okay on the chat? Yes, it's all good. Um, so, you know, is that reflective of exactly what it is that you want to be doing in your business when things kick back off again? So we're going to talk about what does your branding say about your business? We're going to talk about the consistent, the importance of consistency and the value of brand authenticity. Now, why did I share some of those inspirational um, quotes with you to start with? Because that's me. That's me. That is part of my brand. That's part of how I lead my team. It's part of how I make decisions in my business. That is authentically me. So if you can find something that resonates with you just as much as that does with me, then that will help you through this time. It will also help you to create your brand. We're going to talk about presence in digital marketing. We're going to talk about what it is. Um, we're going to talk about is your online marketing presence actually an extension of your business? And are you meeting your market in the right places? We're going to talk about developing connection via social media and the importance of being authentic. I don't teach you how to get more likers on Instagram or how to get more followers on or followers on Instagram, likers on Facebook. There's plenty of courses out there and people who do that far better than I do. But what I do want to inspire you to do is to connect more with your audience. Right now, people are sitting in their homes. They are craving connection. And, you know, they're not getting that amount of connection that they usually would be from their friends, from their family, from their co-workers. And so now is a time to reach out on social media and connect with your audience and start to develop relationships because they're really craving that right now. And then at the end, I'm actually going to give you a list of really um, practical, easy to implement social media content ideas that you can take away and you can start using. So let's talk about your brand. I've actually, um, after three years in the business, um, in this business, I've actually just upgraded my brand. So I've kept the essence of my logo, but I've started to change some of the color palette and I've started to change some of the associated images that go with it because, you know, at the start, my business was just balloon distribution and it's so much more than that now. Um, you know, I, I'm passionate about education. I'm passionate about marketing and, and communication. I'm passionate about flowers and events, you know, and all of those things come to work together. So we've just recently started to update our branding. It's a great opportunity when moving premise. So what is brand? Your brand is actually your essence. It's the connection that you have to your story, to why it is that you actually even started doing this business in the first place. So if you look, if you step back and you think, why is it that I do this? What is my mission and what is my vision? Then your brand actually needs to represent all of those things. It is your visual identity. It's the spark of your business that ignites customers to act to say, you know what, I want to buy something from these people. I want to walk in there and have a conversation with them about how they can create, you know, something to make my loved one feel special or to make my event amazing. It's also 
a visual identity to express yourself to those who need you most. Make them feel like they need you. Um, it's the verbal and non-verbal communication between you and your customers. And it shapes the way that your customers view you and your business. So that's what a brand is. You know, people, um, a lot of people who are in marketing um, can teach that the brand is actually just the visual aspect and how that portrays what you want it to portray. But I like you to delve a little deeper into why it is you do what you do and does your branding actually show that to your customers because that's what people connect with. So then I, this is a bit of a deep dive. I want you to ask yourself some questions. What do you think that your branding says about your business? So you need something that authentically reflects what you're about. You need something that resonates with people emotionally and that makes your business irresistible. Okay, so do you think that your current branding does all of those things? A truly great company logo becomes synonymous with its identity. So let's have a look at some logos out there that are absolutely 100% identifiable. They're not the most amazing logos. They're not beautiful and pretty and they have nothing to do with balloons. But usually when I'm teaching this in person in class, I like to ask the question of what do you notice most about these logos? And there's usually, a, there's a lot of answers, but the top ones usually are, most of them are just one color. Um, most of them are just text with very little image. Um, and a lot of them, you know, they are, I guess, quite bold and quite plain. And that's actually okay because what happens is then we start to implement, we start to integrate other aspects of your branding into the broader picture. So what I'm trying to say is break down your logo. Okay, do you have a hundred different colors? Do you have 10 different images and four different fonts? Because trust me, they're out there. Is it confusing? Is it clean? Does it tell the story that you want it to tell? I was actually teaching a class in Brazil and we had a little bit of time at the end. This was the class we were doing and people actually asked me at the end, would I have a look at their logos? So it was, it was quite remarkable. It was the first time I'd ever experienced it. So I sat on the stage, I actually felt like Santa Claus. And I had this line of people standing there with their business cards and they wanted me to give them feedback on their logo. And the first thing I asked them when they sat down next to me and handed me their business card was, how does your logo make you feel? And it was their body language that told me most of it. The people who were attached to their logo, who believed in it, who loved it, who thought that it identified their passion in the business, they lit up. You know, they wanted to tell me about it. And the people who maybe it was dated, maybe somebody else designed it, maybe they bought the business and it wasn't actually their design. You know, it was existing. Their body language was like, yeah. Yeah. So have a look at your logo and work out how it makes you feel. I've actually got a few people on chat right now that were actually in that class um, in, in Brazil. So hi to, hi to those wonderful people. <laughs> I want to talk about colour, okay, because colour is actually the first thing that a customer will notice about your logo. So in our industry, we know more than most that how much colour actually really matters. Colour psychology is one of the most game-changing tools that you have at your disposal, all right? So all you have to do is Google colour psychology. You will have so much information available at your fingertips. If you're a visual learner, then you will have infographics that are available. If you um, like more detail, you'll be able to read about the psychology of colours. Studies have actually shown that a product Color, uh, product's colour, so a product itself, its colour, influences 60 to 80% of a customer's purchasing decision. 
Now, I do offend a few people when I say this, but please let me tell you that there's no, 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 um, nothing to be offended by, but orange is by far my least favourite colour. So if there's a product and, okay, let's say it's a set of hair ties or a hairbrush and it only comes in orange, I actually won't buy it. Subliminally, I will walk away and I will go to another store or I will choose something completely different because orange just doesn't work for me. So have a look at your logo. Have a look at the colours that you have in your branding board. When I talk about branding boards, um, we talk about um, having maybe five or six, no more than five or six colours that you use in your marketing consistently. Okay, and there's actually a little um, there's a little graphic here on the side of this slide that shows you that um, the Simply and All Natural color palette um, they have set as these six colors. I've actually just changed my color palette because I've changed my I've updated my branding. If you use Canva, um, everyone knows that I'm a big advocate for Canva. Um, there's actually an option in there when you have the paid version, which mind you is not expensive, um, that you can actually set up your branding board. And one of those things that you can set up in Canva is actually all of your branding colors so that they are consistently there for you to use when you're creating marketing and images for your business. So it's really important once you set those colors to ensure that you integrate those brand colors are totally across the board. It needs to be consistent. Once we've worked out our colours, we need to look at our fonts. All right, a good typeface or a font actually creates an emotional response in the relation, in relation to the message that it's actually sending. All right, so um, there have actually been studies done around the psychology of fonts, famous the psychology of colours, and you can you can Google these as well. Um, and it's actually shown that people do not take one bit of notice of anything that is written in Comic Sans. Yep. And from a design perspective, Comic Sans is like, yeah, the absolute worst font that you could use. Sorry if there's anybody out there that's still using it. I encourage you to go and change that one. That can be your first point of call. Um, but these same studies show that um, if something's written in Helvetica as, as a example, um, then people actually take that seriously and they, they read what it is written um, and they want to know more. So how seriously can your customers take your business based on your logo, based on your colours, based on the font of your logo? Is it professional and does it create trust? They're the questions to ask yourself. So when we combine all of that together, we end up with a branding board or a style guide. Now, it doesn't need to look as beautiful as this one or as professional as this one. But like I said, you can use that branding kit option in Canva to set your fonts, um, to set your colours, to set your patterns. You might have a particular pattern or another image that you use. So when we and, and when we're talking about fonts, just going back to fonts for a minute, um, it's really important that you use two, maximum of three, no more than three fonts in your branding. Okay, so you might decide to have something that is bold, that is for your headers and for things that stand out, or something that is scripty and fun and flowing. Um, but then you also need to have a font that is paired with that. And some fonts don't actually work together. So if you're confused or challenged as to what fonts do and don't work together, first thing is you can go to Canva and they actually have font combinations that you can adopt across your branding. Um, and these are things that their designers at Canva have already worked out actually do work together. Alternatively, you can Google font combinations and you will get so many different examples of what works together. Now, how do you choose? Um, you need to go for something that resonates with you, okay? Because you need to have the attachment to your branding in your business. So 
when we talk about creating consistency, the second thing is that once you've come up with your colours and your fonts and your logo and your overall look and feel, you then need to make sure that you review all of your business platforms. Okay, and some of these include your email signature, often that's forgotten, um, your signage. Now, this one's tricky. You know, signage is probably one of the most expensive um, parts of your branding. Um, if you have a bricks and mortar store or retail shop, um, then, you know, signage on the outside of your buildings is not necessarily, um, you know, a, a cheap thing to replace. Um, so it's definitely a consideration to take into account when you're looking at your budgets um, and when things are better and everybody is you know is doing really well again maybe set aside some money in your budget or in your monthly cash flow um, to put towards your rebranding project because especially if you have a van you know it's really important that um, the 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 signage on your van and your vehicles matches the signage that's on your building because it creates instant recognition for your customers um, your website, that's not so difficult to change. Once you've either worked on your branding yourself or you've worked with somebody else on the files, it's, it's, quite, it's quite easy to come in and change your website, the colours, some of the fonts and, and updating your logo. Um, social media, make sure that your Facebook, your Instagram, whatever it is, um, your Snapchat, whatever avenues it is that you use um, consist, are consistent. Okay, and also your printed marketing. If you have business cards or if you have flyers or if you have corporate brochures, then make sure that that's consistent. So are the colours the same? Are the fonts the same? And are you using the same brand messaging on everything? Okay. So once we've got your branding sorted out, now's a really great time um, to have a play around in Canva and see what you can come up with. Um, you know, we need to have a look at, is your marketing presence online an extension of your business? Now, what I, what I mean there is when I first started my digital marketing business, um, I found that I would walk into a store, a beautiful party store. We don't have a lot of retailers left in Queensland, but back then it was beautiful party stores. And it was inspiring. Their work was beautiful. You know, I wanted to buy something. I wanted um, to use them to celebrate, you know, at the next event that, uh, that I had. But when I actually had a look at their website or at the images that they were using of their work online, it completely let them down. So this is a really groundbreaking time to be in business. And I know we look at this as, oh my gosh, you know, this is a really hard time to be in business, but you at the moment have exactly the same fundamental tools available to you as any big corporate, okay? So I guess, you know, you need to have a look at and, and be reflective and say, you know, I've created this beautiful work of art because that's what it is. And I've created this amazing atmosphere for this event. And then I've taken some photos and I've put it on my social media and it really lets it down. It doesn't show how talented you are. It doesn't show how much you can, um, you know, bring emotion into an event. So another thing that I love to teach is actually iPhone photography. Um, and simple edits that we can do on our smartphones using a couple of apps to improve our images. Now, I would have loved to have done that one with you today, but it's a little hard when it's not in person. But do some Googling. Um, you know, come up, try out Pixart. Pixart is my favourite app for editing photos. Um, and recently I was really um, very lucky um, to be asked to not only be a um, maid of honour at a girlfriend's wedding, um, but also to do the decor. And because I'm not a decorator, I'm actually a distributor. I don't get a lot of opportunity um, to, to do big scale stuff. So, you know, I was really excited. I was like, wow, you know, she's going to have a professional photographer. It's going to look amazing. I'm going to get beautiful photos. But when I got the photos from the photographer, his photos of the wedding were stunning. But he didn't know what it was that I was necessarily looking for or how to take photos of decor. So the photos that I had taken on my phone and edited were actually far better for my promotional aspects than what it was that the photographer took. 
and you too can do exactly the same thing. So the other thing to have a look at when you're talking about an extension is your marketing presence and extension of your business. You know, does it make, people are going to meet you and your business sometimes for the very, very first time online, before they even see your store, before they even get to meet you, they're going to make an assumption about your capabilities um, before they even get to meet you. So uh, does it represent the quality of your work? Does your marketing presence tell um, the story of your customer experience if the customer was to call or to meet you? And does the overall look and feel of your website and your social media presence, does it maybe give them another impression? Does it maybe let your business down? And does it not give the customer the same, if not better, experience as if they were to meet you or to work into your store? So they're all questions to ask yourself. So what exactly is digital marketing? What is it that you need to have a look at? You need to have a look at your website um, and search engine optimization, potentially, um, your social media, your online advertising. Um, this is actually an interesting one because, um, you know, people say, oh, well, you know, um, Facebook advertising doesn't work anymore because, you know, there's more people on Instagram than there is on Facebook. The thing is with Facebook um, that it is actually that the stats are actually showing that Facebook advertising still works very well because people may not be as engaged on Facebook. They may not be posting as much or responding or commenting as much, but they're certainly still going on there to see what everybody else is doing. And so, and, the, the, and also the older generation, you know, um, 55 and over, um, definitely still really strong Facebook presence. So Facebook advertising actually works really well. And the other thing you need to have a look at is customer contact through your email newsletters. Okay, we should still be hitting um, the inboxes of people. And I know that um, in the conversation that Chris Adamo and David Mahoney and Stuart Davies were having this morning, you know, they really did a lot of, um, they talked a fair bit about, you know, your email communication to customers right now. So make sure that when you are doing those emails, um, that you're using languaging that inspires people to want to use you, that shows that you care about them and that you want to connect. Um, and also make sure that you add some images in there because images can speak much louder than words. Make sure those images are really good. <laughs> and Canva can help you with that if you feel like you need to create some graphics. So saying all of that, you've looked at your marketing, you've made some tweaks or you've changed it entirely. Um, you need to then work out, are you actually meeting your market in the right place? Okay, so at the moment, let's think about the current situation. A lot of people are at home. Um, they're looking for connection on social media. Um, so don't stop posting right now, okay? Even if it means that you're doing a throwback Thursday or this was my favorite job from last year or here's something that I wanna do, you know, in the future. And I'm gonna give you some really good content ideas towards the end of this. Um, you know, it's like, are you actually meeting people where they are right now? You might find that six months ago, you know, you were using Instagram to um, funnel, uh, you know, traffic through to your website, okay? You might think that Instagram is rocking for you and you don't actually need a website. Let me tell you that social media really needs to be a funnel to transfer that captured audience through to your website, okay? So if you don't have a website, then this is something that you can 100% be working on at home right now. You know, there are so many applications now that you can be using yourself. Um, and if you team up a few apps, Canva, bit of PixArt, um, and, and some of those, you know, WYSIWYG, as they call it. So what you see is what you get. Design, um, you know, apps or websites. You can actually be creating something. Um, and it's not going to cost you a lot of money because you don't have to outsource it. Um, you know, are you on Instagram? Are 
you also on Facebook. You know, even if you're just um, putting most of your efforts into Instagram and then you're sharing those same posts to Facebook, you know, make sure that I look when I teach this class, I usually tailor it to um, the actual area that I'm teaching in. So, you know, if I'm teaching in Mexico, I would look at, you know, what um, people are using, it's quite easy to get those, you know, um, access to those statistics um, to see what it is that people are mainly using. Is it mainly Instagram? Is it mainly Facebook? You know, in some areas, I've noticed that there's a fair bit of Snapchat. In Australia, you know, Snapchat is way down the list. Uh, it's good for 14 to you know, sort of your 12 to 15 year olds. Um, but, you know, in Australia, there's not a massive, you know, um, reason as much to put, you know, that much effort into Snapchat. So Google it, you know, um, social media statistics or user statistics for your country. Okay. And you will see where it is, which social media um, platforms you need to be putting your most attention into. So, um, take a look at your website. What does it say about your business? Yeah, you know, ask yourself that question. Does it need some love? Does it need some update? <laughs> um, you know, do you need to take some old images down? You know, you might have had images of work that's five, six, seven years old and you don't even realise, you know, how far you've come because you've been attending training and you've been upskilling yourself, you know, and your work is just so much better now. So maybe make sure that you've refreshed, you know, the content that's actually on your website. Now's a really great time to do that. The other thing I want to say about that just quickly before we look at the five most important elements of your website um, is that if you um, are looking for really great images right now, say for instance you do bouquet delivery or, or you um, do columns or classic decor, whatever it might be, the qualitex.com website is an incredible resource for beautiful professional images. Now as long as you can actually, you've got the skills to recreate what it is that you're sharing, Pioneer has spent so much time you know, putting together these amazing images and graphics for you. Make sure that you use them. You know, they've even got social media graphics there for you to use. So there's just some, you know, a few places to start. If you decide that, you know, you really want to be doing some, you know, you want to be pushing the baby market, you know, for when we all come out of isolation and this is all over, but you haven't done, you know, a lot of great baby work then jump on to qualitex.com, go to the inspiration section, um, you know, and have a look at all these incredible images that you can use to start pushing that, okay? So that's, that's a really good place to start. Okay, so the top five most important elements of a successful website is the overall design. So the overall look and feel, how it makes somebody feel when they, they, they come into your website, when they land on that home page for the first time. Um, the quality of the images, I just spoke to you about those before. So like I said, go back, take anything off that you just don't think cuts the mustard anymore and start working to replace those. Relevant and well-written content, okay? Now, here's a challenge. Um, you can pay a copywriter to um, create, you know, content for you, um, which nobody's going to do right now because we just don't have the funds. But in saying some people do do this, um, but it's not necessarily authentically you. So what I suggest is if you're not that fantastic at writing the content, give it a go first, get the message down of what it is that you're wanting to say, and then send it to somebody that you know, hey, we're all sitting around waiting to help everybody at the moment. Send it to someone that you know is a good communicator, is great with the written word and say, hey, would you mind? Can you have a read of my content and let me know what you think? Okay, that's a really good way to um, get some good feedback um, and some changes and edits to what it is that you're going to put on your site. The ease of use, that is number four. But let me tell you that, so, that it, studies have shown that if somebody can't find what they're looking for in about 25 to 30 seconds on your website, you'll lose them, okay? So if they can't find what they're looking for easily, they're going to look at somebody else's website where they're going to find the information that they're looking for. 
So ease of use is really important. How organized is your site? Is it easy to find the menus? You know, are, 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 are there pages that are buried, you know, in, in multiple levels of menus? So have a, have a think about that as well. And the overall user experience. The user experience is talking about when someone lands on the homepage, do they feel like they want to explore? Okay, or did they get to the homepage and go, not really what I was looking for, or I don't feel welcomed by this website, so I'm, I'm going to move on. You know, if they feel inspired and they're like, oh, that looks good, and oh, that looks good, pretty lights, pretty lights, pretty lights are good on websites because it makes them want to click on things and explore further, all right, and that's where you're going to get your click-through rates from. So the overall user experience is really important. So if we're talking about content and we're talking about authenticity, then this is one of my favourite quotes. So there's a guy in Australia called Kerwin Ray. Some of you may know of him. He's a bit of a social media guru. Um, he's a bit out there and a bit crazy, but he does not apologise for that. So he, I went to one of his classes um, or his, his seminars and what resonated most with me was be yourself because everybody else has taken. There is only one you. And we need to use that to our best advantage. Um, it's not about trying to be like everybody else. It's trying to harness those things that make you you and use those to stand out above the others or against, you know, somebody else that's standing next to you. And we're not talking about this in a competitive way, but only you can offer what you do, okay? Everybody else can try and offer the same, but it's never genuinely going to be the same. So one of my personal values in life is to create connections through being authentic. And when it comes to posting on social media, I try to keep it as real as I can. But if I'm honest, um, it actually takes a lot of practice and it takes courage too. So these days, business owners are, you know, constantly being told to show more of who they are. But, you know, you need to work out exactly how much of you are willing to share. So owners of small businesses especially have the opportunity to create really credible um, or, or create credibility um, and boost your profiles using, so, using social media. So let's start that now. We've got time to think about what it is that we're going to share. So one, one warning is let's not overshare, okay? So we still, if we're going to be honest, we don't want to see what it is that you're having for dinner, okay? Those days are gone. Um, pets, you know, we're still on the borderline there. I think we can share a little bit of that. But what we're trying to do is um, determine the difference between authenticity and transparency, okay? We don't want everything to be transparent. We don't want to share all of our trade secrets. You know, you don't want to show somebody exactly how it is that you're making that gumball. Um, but, you know, they, they want to know a little bit. They want to know a little bit about what's behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, they value actually knowing and understanding more about you and what makes you tick behind your business. So how you share, you behave and relate to other people online powerfully demonstrates your values, your expertise, your wisdom and your character. So just as if somebody meets you in person, um, you know, everything we do online is a reflection of who we are. The challenge there is that most of the stuff that we do online stays online. So I think an example of this is maybe how you respond to, a, to, to maybe a poor Google review, okay? We've all been there. It happens. You know, the disgruntled customer who you just couldn't please, you did everything you could, but, you know, they probably had a bee in their bonnet about something completely unrelated and then they decided to take it out on you. That's human nature, unfortunately. So you can actually turn this around to demonstrate your values as a business owner and as a person. So, you know, you might get this hammering review. You could be angry and you could be resentful and you could send them a, you know, a scathing message or you could emotionally respond because it's pretty easy to be a keyboard warrior. We all need to take a breath and step back sometimes, um, you know, but how you respond to that um, review 
you know, would demonstrate so much. So, look, I'm really sorry that that was the experience that you had. Um, you know, we understand that's how it made you feel. Show empathy. Empathy is always good. You know, we're really looking forward to, um, I don't know, as hypothetically, you know, um, offering you a refund or, um, you know, preparing something perfect for your party next time. Okay, so empathy, I'm sorry. Firstly, apologise. Understand how they feel, even if you don't. Okay, empathy shows that you're caring and you're willing to be self-reflective on your business um, and then offering them a solution. Okay, now if they decide then to get into a war of back and forwards, then you just let it go. But you've demonstrated your values, your expertise and your wisdom. So how do we become authentic on social media? Okay. So we've got to let go of being perfect because you know what? Actually, nobody is, all right? And those people who portray the perfection, we actually don't connect to them as much as what we do with people who are actually genuine and authentic. We might feel like we want to be that person, but we don't actually connect to them. You need to stop focusing on what could go wrong, okay? So allow more of who you are to shine through instead of worrying about what could go wrong. Okay, ask people what makes you unique, but make sure you ask the right people. All right, listen to your partner or your best friend. Make sure you ask the right people what makes you unique and then expand on those things. Okay, and stay in service and be values driven. Now, what does that mean? It means that when you're interacting online, it needs to be exactly the same customer service as what they would receive as if they were standing in front of you. Okay and always be driven by your values. So this is how we're authentic online with parameters. So authenticity speaks volumes about you and it touches people in a way that spin can't, okay? We talked about the copywriters before, writing, you know, something about you. Um, you know, they can put a glossy sheen on your business, but being yourself is far more credible and a much better way to build your reputation. Okay. So now that I've said all that, let's give you some practical ideas as to help you um, or help your audience get to know the real you um, by sharing your personality, your passions as part of your content. So here's a few ideas to get you started. All right. And some of these we're going to talk about in a bit of detail so that we can make them, um, we can sort of tailor them to our current situation. So behind the scenes pictures in your business, all right? So like I said before, we don't want to show them how we make the gumball or necessarily, you know, how we stick the confetti, um, you know, inside the three footer, but they want it, They want to see. Everybody's a bit of a busybody. We all want to know what's going on behind the scenes. You know, we're all curious. So um, use some of that desire for curiosity um, and show some pictures or do some Facebook Live video or put it on your Instagram um, and show them what happens by scenes. Some of you might be in lockdown, okay? Um, I'd personally like to be locked in lockdown in my warehouse right now because I've got far more to do here than I do at home where I'm trying to homeschool my four-year-old. Um, but, you know, I'm sure you've got stuff that you can show that's behind the scenes. Go through your camera roll. You might actually find pictures that you can use that you've taken behind the scenes when you're actually doing an install, something like that. All right. Share a quote from a famous person and add what it means to you. Now, this is a really good time to do that. You know, um, I hope that by sharing my quotes at the start of this presentation, um, and what it means to me, you were actually able to connect with me um, a little more before we actually went further into the class. So people, I said, are looking for connection right now. So find something that's going to hit a spot in them that's going to make them feel like you care um, and that you get it and that you understand. You know, now is a really great time to be doing that and, and continuing to do that in the future. Um, you could share a quote from someone else's blog about a relevant topic um, and add your expert comments. So the very best balloon blog is obviously the perfect place to start. Um, you know, Sue Bola and the Pioneer team put so much time and effort into that. But it's not just about sharing a post, okay? 
Um, and you don't want to share the ones that are going to give away too many secrets. Um, but you want to put your expert comments on that. Okay, so that people want to know that you know what you're talking about. This means something to me because, okay, um, talk about when you first started your business. Here's a great one, all right? So a little video about why you first started your business and why it is that you're still going to be here standing, ready to help people celebrate when this is all over because this means so much to you. People are going to connect with that. Share a hobby that you love and why, okay? And it might be something quirky. I think we're all pretty quirky and a bit weird and funky in this business. Um, you know, people love quirky. So, you know, a hobby that you're doing at home right now whilst you're in isolation um, or, you know, whilst you're waiting for this to pass, you know, it might actually inspire someone to take something new and it doesn't have to be industry related. This is about connecting with you and your business. Um, do a case study on one of your clients. You know, your clients are actually sitting there probably twiddling their thumbs right now, um, you know, and you've got clients that you've got that really good relationship with. So say, you know, would you mind, I'm working on some social media content. If I send you an email with, you know, five questions, would you come back and let me know about your experiences using me? Because then those people who are going to want to start celebrating or doing events again, once this is all over, are already starting to see what it is that you can provide them as a business. Um, and, and, and having a testimonial from a client is, is super powerful. Um, do a profile on a mentor that you follow and share three things that you've learned from them, okay? They might not be industry related, they might be industry related, but then talk about what it is that makes them um, profound to you and what it is that you're learning. This five-day convention, oh my goodness, like this is full of my mentors, I can tell you that much. Um, so I guess I just put, you know, I need to put my money where my mouth is um, and actually, yeah, share three things, three little nuggets of gold as the guys have been talking about, um, you know, that you've learned um, during either this convention or from one particular person. Um, link a podcast episode that you love. Um, you know, there might be something in there that somebody can learn from that as well. But give your comments on what it is that it's helped you to achieve or what it is that you found helpful in it because that's the part about you. That's the part that's authentic. We have one more page and I think I'll work with the boys. I don't know. Um, maybe I'll just pop it up on the Qualitex group. Um, but I'll actually take a screenshot of these two um, slides um, if you haven't screenshotted them already um, so that you can have these to refer back to later. All right. So um, you could do a profile on a staff member and why you value them. Now, this is a little, this one I was kind of questioning yesterday. I was like, okay, a lot of us have had to stand down our staff. Is this the right sort of time to be doing this? Um, but yeah, why not? You know, um, everybody understands what it is that we're going through right now. So talk about what this staff member, you know, why they were valuable to you when you were, you know, rocking and rolling and why it is that you're so determined to get your business back up and running so that you can get these staff members back doing what they love. Because people are going to want to support you then because you're thinking of others. So there's a really great way to kind of tie all of this situation together. Um, share an inspiring quote. Now we talked about this one before, but this one's a little bit different. So if we're trying to get engagement right now, um, you can ask your followers to drop a GIF. Everybody loves a GIF um, below that shows what the quote means to them. Um, and if we're talking about GIFs, if you don't know already, um, make sure that when you're in there, you search for the Qualitex GIFs because there's some really, um, yeah, there's some really cool things in there that Pioneer have created for you. Um, you could repost a testimonial that you've received and add your gratitude. So this could be a testimonial from last year, from six months ago, whatever it was. But talk about what this meant to you and why you're grateful. Um, you could talk about a time that you failed um, and what you learned from that. Because holy cow, like right now, we're all feeling a bit like a failure, but none of this is actually our fault. But we have to fail. We have to get knocked down, um, you know, Rupert spoke about that at the very start of this convention, you know, like we've just got to keep getting back up. But what did you learn from it? 
okay because everybody wants to know that you're human and that you're also determined and you've got grit and you want to keep going um, share a goal that you're working towards. I think this is a really good one right now. You know, if you decide that you want to work on your branding or you decide that you want to, you know, work on your website, then share that. Say, you know, this is what I'm doing. Um, you know, we've, I've just been part of this convention. I'm going to take this time and I'm going to be proactive in making sure that my business is strong when we all come back online. Review an event that you went to and tag others. Well, there you go. This is, this is the perfect opportunity, um, you know, to, to show your customers, especially your corporates, um, you know, that you're still upskilling yourself during this period, you know, that you haven't just closed the doors and, and, and shut the blinds and, you know, decide that it's too hard. You know, there's all these great things that you're doing. Um, and another one, the last one that I've got here is what are your daily habits and rituals that help you in your business? You might find that by sharing those, you might help others in their business. So that I come to the end now of my presentation. I do just want to say that yesterday uh, or last night, my time, um, I shared online that um, I'd been super, super um, blessed to work with Keith and Dom on some um, designs for the uh, merchandise for this Q Corner convention. Um, and I, I sort of put a little thing out there that maybe we could have a bit of a competition. So um, I would love you to take an example of what it is that you have learned um, from today and share something authentic about you on your social media. Tag me in the post. So Instagram, you'll find me, Zoe Adams Jones CBA, um, and similar on, on, on Facebook. If you haven't friended me already, then go ahead and, and do it. Tag me in the post. And randomly, we are going to um, we'll use a random generator. Um, we'll do this at the end of the convention. And I would love to send you your choice of one of my designs of the Q Corner merchandise. It doesn't matter where you're in the world because the boys have set this up so that we can order from anywhere. All right, so let's just go through that one more time. So post something on your social media that is authentic um, and shows your followers a little bit about you. Tag me in the post. And then at the end of this convention, where I'm going to send one of my designs of Q Corner merchandise out to the winner. So that's it, guys. I'm done. I don't know if they're ready. I think they're like, whoa, she's still got like eight minutes to go. So I've caught them off guard. No, 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 no. <laughs> we are right here. <laughs> We were here. We were, we're right here waiting for you. <laughs> Just trying to get it to change back to you because we had to uh, fire in in a different direction. So it was a bit harder to get uh, <laughs> us back. Thank you very much, Zoe. Wonderful as always. Sorry. My apologies. No, no, no. Zoe, can you repeat your username so that you can tag you? Is she getting it? One second. Yes, at Zoe Adams Jones CBA. At Zoe Adams Jones CBA. Perfect. You heard it here. She's if you tag that in, she's gonna pick a winner, and then you can get one of Zoe's designs, which are we are very thankful for. I think we're all winners listening to that, Zoe. Some great advice. Thank you. We're going to say bye bye to Zoe. Everybody, can you please show your appreciation <laughs> in the chat? Thumbs up, for gold all of those golden Thanks, guys. nuggets. Thank you, Zoe. It's exactly what we needed right now to keep on moving our business forward. So, bye bye, Zoe. Thank you very much. And there she goes. Right, let me reset <sighs> that. There we go. Thank you guys for all of your patience and understanding with that. Thank you very much to Zoe for actually managing to catch up on the time as well. Yep. Thank um, you for Evie and Shani in the chat there, keeping everyone 
reassured that we it's were coming team, back. Right? Yes, teamwork, teamwork makes the dream work. It's so the same.